Awesome. It is so good to be with you here today and taking over the Castro. This is amazing. I never thought I'd see a day like this, but on my way over here in a lift, it occurred to me that I don't remember the last time I took out a credit card to pay for a ride. I don't remember the last time I had to pay cash for a ride. And that whole industry that used to be fraught with you know, trying to hail down a cab, for me it was in New York City, typically in the rain, trying to step ahead of somebody on the curb, hoping you got a driver that wasn't grumpy and that the seat was halfway clean. And finally, worrying that you had card or cash because not all of them had card readers. All of that has been transformed into a simple app that connects you with drivers that show up because they want your five stars and they're typically friendly, a seat that is halfway clean. You know exactly how you're going to get to your destination and how much you're going to pay. And you actually never worry about how the payment happens. All of that transformation really happened in less than a year. And it transformed not only how we think about things, but it actually put some companies out of business. It transformed our thinking from thinking that we had to put up with all of that friction to now knowing that we will never go back to wanting to hail cabs. And all of that transformation really applies to many other things that are in our lives. For some of us, you know, we've all been alive at different periods of time, but you know, that could include things like burning music and uh, on, onto CDs. Uh, that includes things like clipping out newspaper articles to send to somebody, writing long paper uh, letters to people, or even up looking up things in a phone book. All of these places where we have friction in our lives are transformed and our expectation of the future is transformed. And anything that has friction in your daily life, you wonder why can't a simple app be created for this? And um, what's funny about this is that we could never have imagined this world that we're living in today. And our, our children's lives, our children's children's lives will be so much different than we can ever even anticipate. They will have things in their life that will include things like space trips to Mars, and hooking up their cognitive intelligence to neocortex in the cloud, giving them super intelligence, being able to heal their body parts, or if not, uh, be able to print new, new organs off of 3D printers with elongated human lives, being able to think of solutions for problems that we have never been able to really um, make meaningful progress on, like world hunger and financial inclusivity. Those, that future is one that we all will say that we know it's coming. It's just a matter of when. So I could spend all day talking, to this, t talking about this to you and, and you'd probably walk out. But uh, today I'd like to focus, because there is a timeline and a clock ticking, on just three things that are fundamental uh, technologies that make the future possible, this future that we just talked about. And they are IoT, um, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. And let me start with IoT. Your daily experiences today are largely disconnected. Your home experience is disconnected from your driving experience. That is disconnected from your work experience, which is disconnected from your nutritional need experience, which is disconnected from your physical exercise experience. What IoT does is allows objects in those experiences to be connected enabling a layer of intelligence put over them to remove the complexity that's in your life. When you think about it, much of your time is spent in connecting those experiences and managing through that to give you the most meaning in your day. Imagine a world where you wake up with a smart light that slowly turns on an hour early because it realizes that you have an early morning meeting and that you need to work out a little bit more because you ate a few too much Halo Top, a little bit too much Halo Top last night. And your meal is automatically prepared because you have sensors in your body that tells uh, the AI exactly how much macronutrients you need. And it tastes good, by the way. Uh, and your workout is already prepared. Your, your smart car that is self-driving automatically shows up uh, when, when you are already ready for work and your clothes are prepared for you based on the meetings that you have that day. That life 
is enabled and it reduces the complexity of you having to manage all of that so that you could spend your precious cognitive intelligence on higher order thinking. So really when you think about IoT, think about how we used to connect to the internet was going to a, a laptop, going to our mobile device. The internet was way out here from us. IoT brings us into the internet. The internet is part of our everyday lives. And that enables us to have an enhanced, uh, enhanced life. But none of that can happen without artificial intelligence. So when we think about artificial intelligence, what's the one thing that comes to mind for you? Well, for me, it's data. Because fuel for artificial intelligence is data. And lucky for us, with IoT, we're going to have a lot more data. In fact, in two years, we will have 800% more data than we have today. That's a lot. That's enough to crush the internet, by the way. Um, but what's, what's interesting about that data, it's largely going to be unstructured. Today's data is built off of tables with columns and rows that we understand, and so we can build models that, that are predicting outcomes that we have boundaries around. The future will have data that is unstructured. This will be things like video, film, voice, chat, documents. And so the problem becomes, how do you derive meaning out of unstructured data? And the answer is NLP, natural, natural language processing. So if you could think about NLP as being something that can interpret data, derive meaning, so that we can apply deep learning models to it, that it gives us the ability to have super intelligence with a wider span of data set. Imagine we're only using 10% of the data that we, that we have today, and 90% of that data that we will get in the future with 800% more data, that will be unstructured and we'll be able to leverage that for artificial intelligence. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, in 2017, IBM Watson had an experiment where a brain cancer patient um, had to have a clinical trial. And doctors had um, gone through all of the literature. They had looked at a sample of the patient's genome and predicted a clinical, tr a, a clinical trial for that patient. Um, Watson went through 160 medical documents, uh, I'm sorry, 160,000 medical documents, analyzed the patient's full genome, and predicted a clinical trial as well. The difference is it took doctors 160 hours, it took Watson 10 minutes. That time difference is the difference between life and death for a cancer patient. And that's a fundamental shift that can be applied to many things in our future life. It can be applied to really tough problems that we haven't really had the chance to, to really make meaningful progress on. It has the opportunity to enhance our legal system, our financial system, our tax code, so everybody pays the same taxes regardless of how much money you make. It has the opportunity to take social bias and discrimination out of uh, areas of our life that, that we know today. So, so let's say that we have the ability to both be predictive, but AI also has the, the um, ability to be creative. In fact, experts say that over the next 10 years, artificial intelligence will be able to create movies for us that are personalized for our liking, that create, create books. Um, and when you think about what the future holds and how it looks, Today, all of our, all of our uh, uh, literature and movies are, are created based on what humans can produce. Imagine a world where artificial intelligence is actually creating the art that we see and use every day, um, as well as, as creating decisions for our corporate systems and our financial systems and legal systems. So all of this is great. Our worlds are connected. We have artificial intelligence uh, creating a better life for us. But then you may ask yourself, wait, Where's that stuff stored? And aren't there still going to be bad actors? Um, and if you watch the news today, bad actors are everywhere, right? And, and you're right. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say AI has replaced the legal system. And we have the AI Judge Judy, hopefully Justice Snarky. And she has read all the laws. And a court case comes before her where there's a person charged with a crime. And she reviews the case. Based on all the laws, she produces an outcome that is unbiased. Wonderful. Much better than we could hope for today. But that needs to be stored somewhere. And where it is stored uh, is today in a central database owned by the government. When you think about blockchain, think about a thousand nodes, each of those nodes holding all of the records, all of the decisions that have ever been made, and they are stored in a way based on blockchain architecture where you can't go back and change the past. If a bad actor tries to alter 
the, the records on one node, they, they may be able to do that, but they can't alter all the records on all the nodes. Blockchain, if I, to give you an analogy, is like um, if you were to steal a cookie out of a cookie jar that's hidden in a kitchen, it's much easier to do that than stealing a cookie out of an open market where everybody's watching that cookie jar and that cookie jar is locked up. And that gives us the ability to keep the truth the truth. And it's a fundamental piece of how that future plays out. So in closing, I want to leave you with this. With great power comes with great responsibility. And we all have an opportunity to be part of that future that we're building. But that future cannot be built with one half of the population, with one half of the gender set, the sexu sexual identity, sexual or orientation, or skin color. It will take all of us with diverse points of view to build that future that builds the, the kind of society we are striving for today. So I encourage you all to join me in building this future. It is an imperative that we're part of building that for our children and our children's children. Thank you.